Well, Roosters fans, we all know what happened on the weekend. Bells, we talked about it last week on Roosters Radio. We talked a couple of weeks ago to our captain, Corbin Baxter, and our coach, Johnny Strange. I talked to Robbo about it this morning. It is the word on everyone's lips, and I can't tell you, people are salivating over how exciting it is to watch a girls' game of rugby league, but more exciting for Roosters fans because we are the champions, my friend. And joining us today is our inspirational leader and captain, Corbin Baxter, and, of course, Jess Sergis, just you know, playing out of their skin, delivering to our club something that, you know, we had belief, you know, we watched the journey, but we want to hear, and the fans want to hear from you two girls. Firstly, congratulations. And secondly, welcome to Roosters Radio. <laughs> Thank you. We are the champions. That sounds good. I know, that sounds does. real good. <laughs> um, it's great to be here. Thanks for having us on the show. Thanks, guys. Girls, I just can't believe we're sitting here and, you know, we've got you on Zoom and, and, and you just, you know, you look amazing and you just don't, realize that you know less than three four days ago you were out there bashing the opposition and bashing each other they respect us and george they came to play um can you just talk us through the game the excitement the atmosphere Corbin, I'll, I'll, as our leader I'll, I'll go to you first if you wouldn't mind can you just talk what's like what's it like to be in a grand final what was the atmosphere like and just talk us through the journey yeah it it was unreal i remember running out there and actually running out with jess she was by my side and the only thing that I felt like I could do was just like smile. I had the biggest grin on my face. So did Jess. We were just soaking up the moment. Um, the atmosphere was amazing. It was awesome up there at Redcliffe Dolphins home ground. And yeah, being two New South Wales clubs um, playing a NRLW grand final in Queensland, you would, you know, maybe question whether people would turn up. But um, yeah, the fans showed up and um, it's, yeah, it was, a, it was an amazing experience. We had um, some, some great support behind us and, yeah, just something that I'll never forget. Jess, they interviewed you after the game and your smile looked like the entrance to Luna Park and, you couldn't, <laughs> uh, and, and, you know, everyone just loved it for you. But, you know, it was pretty intense out there and, you know, you, you played amazing. Uh, can you tell us your experience? Oh, well, yeah, going off what Corby said, um, I think running out, I'm quite serious. I don't think I ever smile running out of games. I'm, yeah, really just trying to soak in that moment. But, yeah, same as Corby, all I could do was smile. And I think we were just really overwhelmed with all the support we had there. So, yeah, it was obviously a moment that I'll um, never forget. But, yeah, that game was next level for me. That was probably the fastest um, half I've ever played in my life. I remember looking up at the clock and there was about 45 seconds to go in that half. And I just had to take that in for a second because I think all the best games, they go so quickly. So um, saying that, though, the last the last <laughs> half went a bit longer. I wanted that to hurry up and speed up as fast as I could <laughs> as well. But, yeah, that was it was a overwhelming feeling, I think, being in a grand final before and knowing how to feel a loss it's it's devastating so to be on that other other side to experience the win and feel all that emotion and joy it was um it's honestly it's up there for me I've never felt that emotion before my dad saw me after the game and we got our photos back and he said Jess it, you just look like a little girl you just were that excited it took me back years ago and it kind of shocked him a little bit so yeah it was probably yeah. one of the highlights of my career well it was a fantastic G game ladies it was just awesome to watch on Sunday just taking it back um, a week earlier you know that phenomenal win against Brisbane that you had uh, and then leading up into this game what was the week like what was the grand final week like coming into the game yeah it was an interesting one obviously we were on a massive high coming off a really big upset in the semi-final against the the three-time reigning premiers in the Broncos I think a lot of people you know, didn't expect us to win that game, but that sort of made it that much sweeter. Um, we took a lot of confidence from it. Um, but I remember straight after that match, our coach, John Strange, said, you know, lap it up right now, but tomorrow we've got a new job and that's grand final week against the Dragons. So, um, yes, we, we um, entered that grand final week with some confidence, but we knew that it was going to be a whole nother challenge coming up against the dragon so yeah. um yeah it, it was a it was a really big week everyone was really switched on but it was a really nice balance of just staying calm and, and enjoying being around the team it was actually really nice playing up in Queensland because we got to spend a few days um with with each other and have some quality time to make the most of that grand final week so yeah. um and I think coming off that I think if we didn't have that grand final in Queensland we wouldn't have been helped been able to have those four days together yeah. and I think 
being in the women's comp, we don't have a lot of time together as a whole. So I think, yeah, those four days were really good for us. We got to bond on another level. We got to see each other yeah. every day and it just bring, it makes it that much more special. Yeah, and they're the memories you take, those exactly. experiences, the lead up as much as you remember the the lifting the trophy yeah. and, and getting that premiership ring. I think it's, yeah, those experiences leading up that everyone will remember the most. Yeah. So back to the game, you mentioned the feeling that you had running out and that it was amazing. What was the feeling like two minutes in when they scored that try? <laughs> and what, did, what like, how did you lift from that? I can, I'll answer that one because it's purely <laughs> a bit more my fault. Oh, but, not. Um, yeah, I just, it just, yeah, just obviously they, they completed off one of our errors. And, yeah, I think they just, I saw Emma Tonegato coming out the back and I just knew how much speed she had. So, yeah, I probably still had a little bit of nerves. Obviously, it was the first minute and a minute and thirty seconds into the game, so yeah, I think I was still trying to fight off, I guess, those nerves. And yeah, they just scored. So I'd rather them score in the first minute than the last minute of the game. So it did wake us up a little bit. It definitely woke me up. And um, yeah, I think we we like to do that. We like to put a bit of pressure on ourselves. I think it makes us a bit more hungrier. But yeah, I guess them scoring, it just it just made us more hungry so yeah and I think it showed we didn't let them score a point for the rest of the game so we pretty much just you know said let's just flush that like we'll yeah. forget that ever happened <laughs> it was literally the first minute Kylie came on gave us a bit of a spray and then said get over it we've yeah. got 69 minutes still <laughs> yeah. to go so yeah, yeah. <laughs> now what about on the other end of that in the 66th minute when Olivia Higgins crosses over the line what were the feelings there did you, do you think you had it in the bag at that stage yeah, uh, there was, there was, uh, I felt a lot more relieved. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, we knew like, we had We were that. only, we were only a try up and then I guess Hugo went over, um, and there was only a few minutes left and I, that's when it kind of hit me. I was like, holy, holy hell. Like, yeah. I think we've got this. And, um, for me personally, we were walking back, we were pretty pumped. I started to get really emotional and, um, one of my best mates on the sideline, Kezi was there and we kind of just made eye contact for that for that second and um she like she whispered like I'm so proud of you and that really hit me and I started to have like tears come down and I was like I looked up at the clock and I was like Jess there's still two minutes like <laughs> get you in the game <laughs> yeah, don't do this like like anything can happen so yeah. um yeah but that was a really key moment for me I think that that's when it hit me yeah yeah I think that was a big moment here go crossing the line um, big play. I think there's a bit of controversy around it, but actually, she took a she I took her opportunity. Back. I watched that back, and they said there was a bit of controversy because of Callie was on the floor. Yeah, but I saw they tried to go for that one on one strip. Yeah, so they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were doing. Um, of course they so did. We're, we're going to take that. We deserved it. So, a hundred percent. Take the opportunities where you can. Yeah. I say. <laughs> Now, girls, the backs played awesome, but the forwards, mm, those wow. girls going forward. I mean, obviously, everyone knows when the forwards go forward, the backs can do what they what what they're there for. But, geez, the girls played well up front. They did. They did. I could sit here all day and talk about our forwards. I just think they've they've been the rock of the team. Like they, Sala's been leading the way. Sarah T Tongatuki, she's um, had an incredible season. I think. Um, She's played her best footy that we've ever seen and just off field what she brings, like her leadership skills are yeah. second to none. I think she really rallied those middles together and then, you know, having the likes of Hannah Southwell, Maya, Hill Moana um, and then little young gun Keely Joseph who's been with us from the very start um, as like a under 17 year old. She's been training with us as a development player from from the very beginning and to see her debut this year and, and be such a huge part of our middle pack and, um, yeah, bring a lot of energy into into our team has been great to see. But, yeah, each game where we've looked good is because they've set the platform um, and they've allowed the likes of Jess and Isabel and Olivia Koenig and, and all our, you know, outside backs to, to show what they can do as well. So, yeah, they've been huge for us. I mean, what about that? Uh, I mean, you, you made an amazingly classy speech and you weren't overshadowed by any chance. You were equaled, though, easily, um, you know, by Tokituki when she made her beautiful speech at the end of the game. And it was just, it just endeared everyone. I wanted to jump into the TV and just give her a yeah. hug. Yeah, that, that's yeah, it was amazing. solid to a T. She's, oh, she's so respectful. And I think every, before every game, yeah. we, get, we get in a circle and we pray. And she just brings that, just that extra touch into the team. And, yeah, she's 
the most genuine, beautiful person I've actually ever met. And yeah, that speech was hands down probably the one, like, it got all of us emotional, but it even, it got all my family too. And we're not the most religious people, but I think it just showed how much she cared and just how beautiful she is. Yeah. So she just bring people together. Yeah. 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 The, the energy, the energy she brings on the field just physically is incredible. But when you hear her speak, and it was really nice, and it taught us as Roosters fans, you can only imagine how she must motivate you girls. As you just said, Jess, like in a in a prayer circle, whether you're religious or not, it has an effect on the yeah. team, and it lifts you to to do greater things. Girls, I want to touch on um, s- someone who uh, you know there were so many players across the park. I mean, it was no surprise, um, you know, she was man of the match, um, but any of you could have picked up that honour. But one player that stood out for me that just cuts them in half, and I think anyone that plays rugby league, I mean. You know, we have this male-female domination thing going on. She plays like a guy who used to call, uh, used to be called Bradley Clyde is Hannah Southwell. Her defensive technique, I would never run at her if you played <laughs> Not even on the Yeah, drink. I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, we've played against her and with her. And, yeah, I think it's safe to say we love having her by our sides. But she's sort of just been that player over the years that you can compare to the guys because she's yeah. just like – textbook tackler she folds people in half unbelievable i think like yeah she's she's just so impressive to watch yeah she is and yes. she's just a she's just a great footy player a good egg off the field as well but yeah just her tackle tech i think um Cuts everyone can half. see that she's she's definitely mm. um the best in the business yeah. for sure just want to touch on coach john strange one thing that was uh two questions i got one is um what did he say at half time and two is He's created such an amazing culture that the level of respect and love, you know, the father figure you talked of in your speech is, is amazing. And, and uh, you know, he deserves every bit of that victory. You could see what you girls mean to him. We've spoken to him on Roosters Radio the week before. Uh, Bells and I have interviewed him with yourself, Corbin, up at the Captain's Club. So first of all, question one is, what did he say at halftime? And question two is, how important is Strangey to this team? I'll go question one. You can go question two. Um, I th- <laughs> at halftime, he was actually pretty calm. I think he had he's had the faith in uh, the belief in us um, from the get go, and I think even being just four points down, he knew that we were yet to play. You know, our best footy of the match. Um, we had created some some good momentum and some good opportunities, and that's just what he um, made us realize. You know, we are creating opportunities. We just need to ice them off a little bit better. Um, and yeah, j- just to execute a little bit better. Like it was very practical advice, yeah. um, which is just what we needed to just, you know, take each minute by minute and get the job done rather than thinking too much about winning the match. It was just about get out there, do your job yeah. and stick to the process. Stick to the process. Just, yeah. Yeah. We didn't want to get too, um, over, I think thinking about the end result, we just had to really stick in there and win that next 35 minutes and yeah actually one more thing I remember he asked right before he's like if we want it we've got to go get it the dragons aren't going to give it to us yeah. and yeah he just asked this question how, like how much do you want it and I think that was what fire we our bellies. yeah what we needed to, to just fire up a little bit and get cracking for the second half yeah and I think um what he does to the club I you know for me personally he was a really Big reason why I did want to come to the Roosters. I've heard such high things about him, especially at Clubland at the Central Coast Roosters. So everyone I've spoken about, they've always got such good things to say. And I really love that, love that as a coach. I love, um, obviously, respect is such a big thing in the women's game. But I think having that genuine friendship on the side. And I think I've really learnt that with Strangey. He can be that really serious um, coach when we're there. He really likes to switch on and get straight into it. But then he's definitely got that other aspect of him where he's that fun playful side and likes to crack on and have have a few jokes (laughs) with the girls so yeah I think we've got so much respect for him and I think he just yeah he knows his football Um, he knows how to win (laughs) yeah and that's I think he's won (laughs) like every female every female team that he's coached I think he's taken the premiership premiership out out. so pretty impressive yeah great guy and even better coach so yeah very we're very lucky to have him keeping Keeping on the topic of the coach, <clears throat> last week when we spoke to him, he kept referring to the word belief. Mm. What was the belief like in your playing group this year? Yeah, it it was it was definitely there the whole time. Um, in saying that, it, it was rocky. Like we yeah. had some some very low moments, to be honest. Like um, I remember after the second loss, I unfortunately missed out on a couple games, but um, it was it was actually interesting um as the captain to sort of see how the girls dealt with that 
Um, and it was tough, but just the way that we sort of digged ourselves out of it mm-hmm. um, as sort of heartbroken as we were early on to, to lose some games and almost feel like we were out of the competition um, to just quickly snap out of it and, and just say, hey, like, yeah. never we never quit, we never die, let's keep going and pushing on um, and just controlling what we could control, which was getting to training, showing up, um, having trust in our coach, having trust in each other, um, obviously getting a win – that first win helped and, and added a bit of confidence to to the group and then I think the belief just kept building from there and um, yeah even when we lost that first game against the Dragons um, that belief that we played some good footy and that it was still in us was there and we were obviously gifted a bit of an opportunity in the in the semi-finals but we made the most of it and um, yeah ine- inevitably got us to the grand final and um, I think it would be that word the belief that got us through in the end. Well, ladies, the full-time siren goes on Sunday. You you know, you're in the middle of the park. You've just won the grand final. We've got the presentation. What's it like up on that stage together and to hold that trophy up? Oh, my God. I, to, oh, it, was, it's just, it's, it was just a moment that I think <laughs> happened so fast. Like, I, if I could go, like, I don't know, if I could go back, I would just want to do so many more things, but it was just in the moment and I think that's the best thing about it that it was just all a blur and I think having Corby up there and being her birthday and being able to hold that trophy up and I guess how much she's done and she's done and what the club's done for us it was just it made it so much more special so I wish I could just go back to relive that like last 40 minutes and just have that that celebration again but yeah it's it's just it's Oh, it's a pinchly it's moment and yeah. uh, it's what everyone dreams of. So I'm so glad that we got to experience it. I was thinking I needed to do a few extra push presses because that thing was heavy. <laughs> I actually don't know how you got it above your head. The I adrenaline was so <laughs> The last bit of adrenaline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took it out of me. Yeah. She is heavy. And the rings, have you got them on, ladies? Oh, what, what are the rings like? We, we don't. They're, they're amazing. We... They're a bit small for every other finger, or mine at least, except yeah. for the pinky, but they're huge on my pinky, so I'm so scared to lose it. Yeah. So mine's in my box. Bit of an awkward size. They fit just the pinky, but they're just that little too big. So yes. We wore it. We Have wore to get it, those resized. Yeah, we wore it all day on the Sunday, and I remember just trying to grip on. Oh no, we're walking around could. like with our fists closed just so um, we could We lose did. It. We did have someone lose it for about five, ten minutes, and then we found it at the bottom of the yeah, bin. Yeah, I think it scared us. So, <laughs> so was we it the bottom of the bin? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Name and shame. Who was <laughs> that? You found it. Lay oh, on trust. the bus, we're having a couple of drinks, and she had it. Up. We'll cut that name out. Though. We'll <laughs> nah, <that> nah. <laughs> but and shame over yeah, it just made us um, grip onto it that yeah. little bit more. So yeah. But it's like. um it's pretty cool. That's like that's been the missing piece, I think, or for me at least. Um, so yeah, that's gonna hold a special place in, in our hearts forever. For sure. So the celebrations. I asked Strangey during the week, <laughs> "Do you have Mad Monday?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you have Mad Monday, but what was it like celebrating? You went out that evening. Yeah. Or give us a rundown. Oh. I wanted to be there. I wanted to gate cash, <laughs> but give Should us a rundown. Oh, he did call it silly yeah. Sunday. It was actually the best, the best time together. After the game, we we just took our time in the sheds. We sang our song. Yeah. We had a couple of drinks, popped some champagne, all the went, Premiership winning stuff. Went back on the field. Yeah. For like 45 minutes, which yeah. I love. Like we. Could, I think in the moment, as I said, it just happened so quick and it was such a blur. But Stranger did say, soak it in, in about half an hour, let's go back on the field and just soak it all up. And that was probably that was probably the highlight for me, I think, being with all our team and the staff and being able to thank everyone and just really taking it in. That, um, yeah, it just, it made it feel that much more real. And I think we had that downtime to be like, holy hell, what just happened? Yeah, so, and when you're, yeah. When you win a premiership, it's it's very unlikely you're going to be with the same group of people, both players and staff. So we just tried to enjoy each other's company um, for an extra hour out on the field, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we had back, had some family and friends join us, had, had a bit of an awards ceremony yeah. and um, danced the night away. It's good fun. So fun. <laughs> I've got a video of two of uh, Corby and I dancing, so yeah. if you want, I can. Oh, we might have to I'll see that. I'll send it over to you guys. <laughs> a bit of grease lightning. Pop it in. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty good. Great feeling. Now, ladies, um, now that was uh, 
2021 seasons that we played this year. So we've got like some more football, to, which is great to look forward to towards the end of the season. What What's the plan moving forward from here for um, our next season, which is our 2022 season? Oh, yeah. Well, it's it's actually nonstop. I was actually saying to Corby just before we got in, um, we've only got a week off and then we're straight, <laughs> we're straight back into footy next week. So... It's, it's good. I think it keeps us on our toes. And I think um, the other side of that is we're probably going to be at our best the whole year having so much footy. So we've got a, we've got a quick turnaround season um, back at Harvey Norman. And then before we know it, we're going to be back in that 2022 season. And um, it's gonna be, it's, it, it is a big year for us, but I think we've never had that before. And we're really, we're really ready to take that on board and to try and play our best footy possible. So it yeah. should be good. Exciting. Big year. Je- Jess, I'm going to fire one at you. Then, Corb, I'm going to talk about you, which is probably uncomfortable. But I had a coffee with Trent Robinson this morning. Just by chance, I actually gate crashed his breakfast. <laughs> and um, I ran into Robo, and we just t- – it's on everyone's lips. You know, it's you go to the coffee shop, you go to the gym, you go somewhere. What about those girls? And I spoke to Robo about the special moment. I said, I hope you addressed him. You know, we're, we're, we're mates and, uh, you know, Bell's husband played with Robo and um, we coach his kids. So we're familiar with each other. And we always interview on Roosters Radio, but we talked about leadership. Jess, what's it like to have a leader like Corbin, uh, you know, lead you and the team out and just keep you calm, you know, off for two weeks with COVID and just come back with an absolute, you know, amazing, uh, you know, couple of performances. What's it like, Jess, for, you know, to be led by yeah, Corbin? Yeah, well, I've, I've, been very, I've been very fortunate. I've had Corby in my life before footy, so I definitely know her on that deeper level and how she is as a person. And she definitely is that same person on the field. She's very humble and genuine. So... I think saying that having those two weeks at the start of our year of the campaign, we were a bit rocky and um, I guess we had those leaders on the field, but I think Corby just brings that extra buzz that we needed and I think it definitely showed her coming back into that squad and um, I guess we winning that third game and just really lifting our spirits. But I think um, Corby definitely leads with her words as much as her actions and she really brings that calmness into our squad and I think she's been she's been there over the years and she's had those high moments, she's had those low moments, so I really think she knows how to balance that and it just keeps us all calm. She, um, I guess, uh, yeah, her words are just there and she really um, puts that fire in our bellies but then she goes out on the field and she delivers with her actions as well and she's probably in the game one of the safest and um, one of the safest fullbacks and I know that she's going to do her role and I think um, just having her on that field, it just brings that that safe component to our game and I can rely on her so much. So, Thanks, yeah. mate. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's well, hurting Coburn, me it to talk so nice of you. But. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it's so nice to hear, but it's, it, it's so evident to see, Corbin, and that pick-up in the game where they uh, St George put a little kick through and you just came in, it might have been a drop ball, but it was, it was rolling along the ground and you just picked it up so confidently, so comfortably and... That just says to your players, I got you. And I love that. And I mentioned that moment to Robbo today. Like there were so many highlights for me as a Roosters fan. You know, we've got such family history, all of us here and you girls included. And you've done something for our club that's history making. Uh, And I said to him, you know, what do you think? And, you know, we all know we revere our coach. You know, he's a great friend, but we revere how he thinks, you know, same with Strangey. And he said, mate, they're so well led. Corbin spent three months with us. He said, she is such an impressive leader. And Mm -hmm. and I don't mind telling you that. Mm -hmm. and you're not talking out of school, but what does leadership mean to you? How proud are you to lead this team of girls and what does leadership mean to you? Yeah, I, it's been all like an absolute honour being the captain of, of this team. Um, yeah, I think leadership doesn't really come naturally to me. <laughs> I always sort mm-hmm. of like get sick of my voice and I'm actually quite like, intro- like I can be extroverted, but I'm quite introverted as well. So I feel like it's been a bit of a journey and I, I've developed sort of my own style and um, finally in the last probably year or so been comfortable with, you know, uh, standing tall and claiming and, and being proud of being a leader. Um, and I think that comes from um, the team, the, the backing of Sydney Roosters. They give me a lot of confidence in myself to um, just do what I do and be myself and, and be proud to to – um, yeah, d- be a leader and, and do it my way. So um, it, it means a lot. Um, I'm just really lucky to have, yeah, great support from the Sydney Roosters um, that they believe in me as well. And, um, and yeah, I think that's what it all comes down to, making, making um, myself feel comfortable to be in that position. And it it's obviously comes with 
um, a lot of pressure and whatnot. But um, yeah, just to have the, the backing of the club and the girls, it, it means the world to me. Yeah, well, I think on that note, girls, you've got not the backing, of, not just the backing of the club, the coach, each other, the girls. You have s simultaneously just crossed boundaries with rugby league. And, you know, I, I was talking to a lot of men, say, oh, I can't watch that girls game. I said, well, you're an idiot. <laughs> I said, you're missing out. Yeah. I said, and, they and don't you know, say it anymore. And you know yeah. what they said today? <laughs> they looked at the grand final. They said, mate, oh, they looked at the game against the Broncos, to be honest. And they said, mate, you're right. I've been preaching this and I've preached it since watching State of Origin a couple of years ago, saying how exciting it is and stuff. But you girls have made history. You've made history for yourselves. You've made history for our great yeah. club. You've made history for your family. And you've made it together. And I love seeing this relationship <laughs> that you guys, you know, off before we started, you know, beatboxing, <laughs> having fun. You can just see we the joy. We didn't know you could hear us. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, <laughs> that energy transfers over to the fans. We get so much joy out of seeing you girls not only just perform so well, but just see how much it means to you and your families and how much you guys mean to each other. So... From us at Roosters Radio, we're so we're proud of you. We're, proud of you. Mm. We're, we're so behind your cause, your efforts and your abilities. And, and long may it last. Thank you so much for giving us a moment. We won't forget. We would have loved to have been there. Bells and I talked about it. You know, <laughs> we only just come through COVID and we couldn't travel. But I tell you what, you know, we don't have to be. We watched it on TV every moment and you gave us so much joy. So congratulations. Get those rings resized and don't <laughs> lose it. And we will be either hosting or at the events that we will be celebrating this for years to come. There'll be reunions and stuff. And one day you'll be old ladies with bad knees. Yep. <laughs> um, and still good attitudes. Not, not far off but, that. Um, <laughs> I think I've already got one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. But thank you so much for, you know, sharing your time and your experience on Roosters Radio what you've brought to the club and just being as classy athletes as you are and on and off the field, we really appreciate it. Congratulations. Thank you, on Thank you for letting us share yeah. share our experience and um, yeah, giving us a platform to speak. We, we really appreciate you having, having us on the show. So thank you. For sure. Thanks, guys.